Welcome to the App or Not to App podcast with the app man, Jeremy Callahan, where we talk about why apps are not a luxury item and are essential to your business success. I've been in the mobile industry for over 20 years, and the question I always get is to app or not to app. Definitely, you must app. Mobile apps can help your business reduce costs, increase leads, and reduce manpower. An app is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. So let's get started making you money. Hey, welcome back to the podcast, Jeremy Callahan. And the topic for this podcast is you need a mobile strategy for the next five years. Hey, did you know that over 60, 65% of your traffic right now to your website is mobile? That includes all the emails that you're sending out when people are clicking on those emails, any Facebook posts that you're doing, any of that traffic that's coming, the majority of it is coming from a mobile phone. People are actually clicking on those emails from their phone or the Facebook posts from their phone, Instagram, whatever it is, they are coming from their phone. And so, you know, I want to ask you, what is your business going to look like in 2023? 2023 is five years away. You know, how will mobile change your industry? Most companies are worried about what's going to happen in the next quarter. You know, are they going to make their number? Nobody's looking five years out. And I'll give you a quick little story. It's, it's March already. Uh, today is March 5th. And I was having a conversation with my daughter the other day about, she said, it's, can you believe it's March already? It was just New Year's. And I said, yeah. She said, February is a short month. I said, February is a short month. And it's already March. So think about that. It's already January and February have already passed. It's already March. You know, your kids are probably going to be graduating um, from whatever grade they're in, in end of May, June. That's only three months away. Summer's going to be over in another six months. They're going to be going back to school. And so that's how fast, you know, three months, six months, a year can go by. Next year, you're going to be sitting here going, I can't believe a year went by. And so there's a saying out there, I don't know where it came from, but it says most people grossly overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, and they always underestimate what they can do in five years. So it's really that simple. People think they can get so much done in one year. One year of time is not that much. But five years is a good amount of time, and people always underestimate what they can do in five years. So... I want you to take some action and, you know, part of this podcast today is is that you need a mobile strategy for the next five years and I want you to take some action. I want you to take out some time on a regular basis in your business, at least once a quarter, once a month would be better, and actually envision where you see your industry heading, how you see mobile affecting your industry. And when you do that, you'll kind of be a little bit more ahead of the wave. Okay, so the... Other thing I kind of want to get off the top at the top of the podcast today is that, you know, the second wave of mobile is coming. Another saying, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is right here today. And with mobile, what I'm seeing as an expert in the industry is that this second wave of mobile is kind of coming. And, And what that really is about is it's going to be about more about companies and business to business apps versus what we've seen, you know, in the la- in the previous five years, which is more consumers, like consumer based apps. Um, there, there's a little bit of leeway in there as far as like, there's definitely some business apps out there. But for the most part, it's been consumer apps. So let's talk about why you need a mobile strategy for the next five years. And I'm just going to talk about I'll give you a few examples of some things that will make a difference uh, in your business, in your industry. And one of the first things that we're really going to see over the next five years, and you're going to start hearing this term a little bit more, or this saying, it's the disrupted will become the disruptors. The disrupted. So when we talk about the disrupted, if we look back in time, we can think of like the taxi cab companies, right? Uber was the disruptor. The taxi cab companies were the disrupted. And what we're seeing a trend in now is that all of the bigger companies realize what's going on. 
they realize the world's going mobile, and they realize they're not agile enough to adjust. So what they're doing is they're starting to purchase all these companies that are disrupting. So when a disrupting company comes along like Uber, you know, the taxi cab company, their first idea was to sue them out of business. Instead of just maybe buying them or maybe hiring a software company to develop the same technology. So I'll give you an example of a company I just have been working with for the past nine months, Safeway. Safeway and Albertsons, they're one of the largest grocery, train, grocery chains in the United States. And what they've been doing is they've been um, purchasing a lot of grocery stores. They've been purchasing Vons, Randalls, Jewel Osco, Shaw's, Star Market, a bunch of other ones. And they've been kind of consolidating them all together. And then the other thing that they've been doing, though, that's significant because anybody can buy all the old school grocery chains is they bought they've, they've done two things. And one of them is they purchased a company that's called um, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a basically it's a box that gets sent to your house with a bunch of fresh ingredients in there and a recipe. And I can like whip up, you know, fettuccine Alfredo with vegetables and crusted panko crusted chicken, right? And all the ingredients come in a box. And so they realize there's disruption happening within their industry with these startups. And they're not going to sit around and wait. You know, they're purchasing all these grocery stores or consolidating those. But then at the same time, they're realizing what's happening within our industry. How is our industry changing? How's it going to change over the next five years? And by asking this question, They've come up with the answer. They started identifying companies that are disrupting the space. And instead of waiting, they're getting involved. They're actually going to, instead of trying to compete, they're just going to purchase these companies. Now, if they make bad purchasing decisions and waste their money, well, that could be detrimental as well, but they're, they seem to be doing it strategically. Another move that they're, they're doing is they're working with a company called Postmates. And if you're not familiar with Postmates, Postmates is an app that you can basically get anything delivered to your home. You can get alcohol, you could get food, um, you could get food from the grocery store, you could get food from all the restaurants around you. They're just basically a delivery service. A lot of Some are delivering on bikes, some are in cars. I think the majority of it is on bikes. And so what Safeway Albertsons is doing is they're integrating with Postmates, right? They realize people want to order groceries from a mobile app and they want them delivered to their home but they don't want to go out and create an entire delivery service so they're using a third party so they call up postmates and they say hey can we integrate can we work together with you can we merge and have a partnership where we send you business and you deliver it it works out well so one of the you know why you need a mobile strategy for the next five years right off at the top is the disrupted will become the disruptors. So if you're in a big company or you work for a bigger company and you you sit there and every quarter and you look at where the industry is going and how things are shaping up, then you can determine where the disruption is coming from. Should you compete or should you acquire, right? And that's a strategy right there. So that's the first one right off the top. And... Um, just kind of another little example out of there. I was watching, um, I was flipping through the channel, and it was the NFL network of the football, and they do this thing called the combine every year, where all the college kids come, and they like, they run and jump and lift weights, and all the coaches are sitting there with their clipboards evaluating all these players. And so, if you work for a large company or a corporation, and when you do this, when you sit with your team, get your team together maybe once a quarter and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to collaborate for a couple of hours about how our business is, what our business is going to be in five years. And then at the same time, get the clipboards out and start looking at all the apps that are out there, all the other companies that are out there in the mobile space and see what they're doing. And be like those coaches, start evaluating them going, this is somebody we could potentially acquire. This is somebody that the competition is going to want too, right? So there's going to be, so you know, look at banks and financial institutions, right? A lot of this, there's talk now of all this um, cryptocurrency, right? I mean, do you really think the banks are going are gonna to be out of business? They're 
they're looking at all this stuff, man. They're watching it like a hawk, right? They're, they are, they're spying in on every company that's coming up and they are either going to compete with them or they're going to buy them, one or the other. And that's what's happening in the world. Now, there's going to be some companies that come out of the crypto space that are going to, you know, not want to be acquired and disrupt. But at the same time, the disrupted are becoming the disruptors. Okay. So another reason you need a mobile strategy for the next five years is um, complete industries are going to be formed in the next five years. Okay. And I'll give you an example. Let's just look back in time five years. Five years, 2013, 2012. Um, here's some companies that basically they existed, but they didn't really, they weren't mainstream. They weren't anywhere. So Uber barely existed. Airbnb, I don't even think they were around in 2012. Netflix, Hulu. I mean, they were there, but they, they, they weren't really, I mean, they didn't become mainstream until like the last year, last two years, right? Uber a little sooner, but Airbnb has only been around for like three years. So think of that. An entire industry has been created in the last five years. It's called the sharing economy. Uber and Airbnb are the two biggest in the sharing economy, which essentially means that people share. I have a car. I'm, I'm going to drive you. I'm going to share my car with you to give you a ride. I have my house that I don't use in Tahoe. I'm going to share that with you, right? So people are sharing. It's peer to peer. It's an entire industry has been created, right? And so when Uber came around and the taxi cab companies didn't react, that's kind of one thing. But at the same time, somebody over at Airbnb was like, hey, um, there were people before Airbnb, there was um, VRBO, vacation rental by owner, right? But all Airbnb did was make everybody's home into a, into a vacation home because all all VRBO, um, all they did was like Cabo, Hawaii, Tahoe. Well, you can go to any town in the United States now, and there's an Airbnb there. Lodi, California, Chico, California. There's an Airbnb there. We stayed in one in Chico, in fact. It's very nice. So that's another example of, you know, like a mobile strategy for the next five years. Completely new industries are going to be formed. And you, you're not going to be able to see these things coming unless you step out of your business, right? Everybody in their business right now is so day to day, so quarter to quarter, trying to make money, trying to make ends meet, trying to get the, the sales through and the bills that they don't step back and look at things from a big picture. So you need to do that on a regular basis. And um, again, complete new industries are going to be formed. So get your mindset to think better. Um, you know, crypto payments, right? Like crypt cryptocurrency. I mean, it, cryptocurrency, I'll give you two, cryptocurrency and blockchain, right? First of all, crypto's around. People, you can't, you can't even buy anything online with cryptocurrency right now. I mean, maybe you can buy a few things, but you can't buy very much. Everywhere you go shopping, you can't use crypto. But in five years, are you going to be able to use it everywhere? Right? So there's a trend right there. Where are you on that, on that trend? Are you on the sidelines looking in? Are you going to take crypto payments? I mean, what's it going to be? Blockchain? Blockchain is just a buzzword right now, right? Oh, it's going to, I, I hear it all, man. It's going to change everything. Distributed ledger, all this. And it's, and it's there. It's going to. It's coming in. Is it going to help your business? Maybe. Is it going to help the trucking industry? Absolutely. Is it going to ha help airlines? Absolutely. But I don't know if it's going to help your business, but it could, right? You need to be looking into this stuff. You need to be researching. You need to be learning. Get your team together. Do it. Okay. Another reason you need a mobile strategy over the next five years, and that's the topic for tonight, why you need a mobile strategy over the next five years is technical debt. And this is a problem that, you know, 95% of the companies I work with have, and this is not exclusive to big companies. This can be small mom and pop shops. And I'll give you two examples, okay? Technical debt is um, one of the best examples is Universal Orlando, right? Just helped them last year for 14 months do a complete makeover of their website and both their mobile apps. Their website was from 2011. And this year they just redid it, uh, 17. So that website was six years old, okay? 
they had to, they they did a three year project, well over fifty million dollars to rebuild that website just so they can grow, just so they can grow. So it's not so much they rebuilt the website because it wasn't that it didn't cost them that much money to rebuild the website. It cost them that much money to rebuild their back end system, their websites, their mobile apps, everything, all of their technologies, their sales processes, everything, just so they can compete, just so they can grow moving forward. So it, it, if you're a huge company, every huge company has this technical debt. So at some point, you have to bite the bullet. You have to say, either you're going to continue to plug the leaks or you're going to go for it and you're going to completely scrap it and start over so that you can grow. And, you know, that is a mobile strategy. If you're going to look at your company, what is it, how much technical debt do you have right now? I'll give you a a smaller example, a personal story for another company that uh, we're helping out right now called FlexCare. They have a staffing company. They staff about 1,100 people. And they have a technical system that takes them, basically it takes them 10 people every week to run billing, to, to run their billing and their payments to make sure the, the employees get paid. And so they can't grow their business and they're, they're stuck. And they know exactly, the owner of the company is a smart guy and he, he knows exactly that he could continue to grow the business and hire people to do that same process, that broken process. But over time, it's just going to cost him more money and it's like going to hamper his growth ability. It's going to be very tough on him to continue to evolve as a business and compete. And so he looks at his technical debt and he goes, well, I got this huge problem. How can, how can we solve it? And then again, there's, there's two ways to solve technical debt is one, to continue to plug the gap. You know, oh, we'll, we'll fix this little part, but not everything. Or bite the bullet, start from scratch. And what they're doing is very intelligent. It's they're going to rebuild the entire system, but they're going to do it one system at a time. So we know we can do the, the time card piece of it. And then that'll, once we get the time card piece, we can go on to the next piece. But we're going to engineer it from the beginning so that when we do the time card piece, we can actually grow and scale the business. So you need a mobile strategy. Um, for the next five years is the topic of the podcast. And uh, I want you to take some action, okay? I, I want you to take some action if you're listening to this or watching it. Um, and one of the things, I'll just give you a few steps. Um, I want you to create a high-level five-year technical plan. And that sounds pretty easy, but I know it's not. Um, but but where do you want to be in five years? You know, it's hard to get out of the mindset of... Um, the day-to-day business and operations. So one is create a high-level five-year technical plan. Number two is I want you to identify all the technical debt that's in your company. Number three is I want you to identify all the disruptive companies that are around. So if you start to see somebody coming up that's maybe in your industry or maybe very similar to your industry, um, take notice of that, right? Identify it. If you have an idea for a mobile app of how a mobile app can really um, increase your leads, reduce your manpower, anything like that, take some action towards it. And then, and then that's kind of gets to the last one is decide to be the leader in your industry, right? Nobody wants to just truck along with a business and, you know, hope everything stays the way it, 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 it has always been. World's changing fast right now. So decide to be the leader. Um, okay. So, you know, let's talk about why it's important to have a five-year mobile strategy. And really, it's, it's really simple. Again, over 65% of your traffic right now is mobile. And that's only going to go up. You know, by 2023, it could be 90% of traffic you get could be mobile. 80, 90%, right? So you need a mobile strategy for that. And again, every email you send, everything, every Facebook, social media post you have is people are coming from a phone. And you need to give people a different experience when they come from the phone than you would from a website. You can't just put your website onto the thing. There's a lot of different power that the phone has as far as a camera, geolocation. So there's a lot of things that you can take advantage of, and you need a strategy for that. So I know. I get it. I mean, I know what you're thinking, and 
it's um, it costs too much money. It takes too much time. The world's moving too fast. You know, I can't even plan out a year, let, let alone five years. But, um, you know, I mean, you got to get over that, right? I mean, you can spend the next five years catching up with the market or you can be the leader, right? So be the leader. Come up with a plan, you know, take, take some action. So um, let me give you some tips, some quick tips that will help you out with this process. Um, number one is uh, block off some time. Block off some time in your calendar once a month to do this. Really works good to do it on a weekend. I found personally that um, I like to do it on the weekend, like on a Saturday, once a month. Um, I just talk about my, I, I just create some time and talk about my business with a few other people that I know. Um, do a retreat. You know, sometimes getting out, like, like that's why I like to do it on a Saturday because I'm not in the office or even if I go into the office on Saturday, no one else is there. So there's no distractions, but do a retreat. Um, meet with some senior people that you know, meet with some of your mentors, meet with some of the senior people on your team, meet with some of the kids on your team, some of the young people, see what they're thinking, right? If there's an intelligent, um, younger person on your team, bring them in, find out what they're thinking. Um, form a mastermind group is always a good one. Doesn't necessarily need to be people in your company, people in your industry. Just if you know three or four people that are forward thinking people like myself, and then maybe you're a forward thinking person, and then maybe Yovo's a for, former forward thinking person, we all get together and we just kind of rail off ideas. And then, and then the, the most powerful one is to think backwards is to think from the end. So it's a little harder to do, but if you can be calm and lay down and relax, I recommend laying down for this one and relax and be calm. And then just think about what your business is in five years. Pretend it's five years in the future and what your business is. And then if you can get, it's hard to do, but if you can get a real strong vision of what your business looks like in five years, then it becomes really easy to take a piece of paper once you're done kind of in this meditative state to come up and just make a list of all the things you would have to do to get to that point in five years. And so you actually, you're working, you're working backwards. You're thinking from the end. I actually have a blog post called thinking from the end um, on jeremycallahan.com. You can find it. It's actually called thinking from the end. And it's, it's literally about that, about seeing what you want and then all this, and then working all the steps backwards to where you are now. Uh, it's very powerful. So in summary, you need to create a five-year technical plan, and then you need to reevaluate it at least every quarter. Uh, I recommend monthly. All right, favorite part of the show, Ask the App Man. If you have a question and you want me to answer it, uh, I, do, um, I get a lot of emails. People contact me on social media. It's jeremycallahan.com. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, all the popular social media. And if you have a question, just send it to me. I'll ask. I'll. Um, I always answer the questions from the from my viewers and listeners. And sometimes I read them on on the air on the uh, podcast. So I'm going to read this one. And this is from um, a woman named Sabine. Hi Sabine, and thank you for the letter. Hi Jeremy. I'm a life coach. I do live events. I have a website. Sell a video course on social. Uh, sell a video course. I'm on social media and have a podcast. My primary source of traffic is Facebook, but they recently changed how often my posts get shown and my traffic and sales have suffered. I was wondering if an app could help me grow my business. Yes, absolutely. And this is one I've been seeing from people a lot lately, and it's something I've been talking about a lot lately. And uh, I get it. You know, Sabine, I feel your pain here because... I have a lot of content as well, and I put it on Facebook, and I put it on LinkedIn, and I put it on all these different sources. I have a podcast I'm coming out with an online course, and um, one of the things is, you know, is that your content, the truth is, here's the truth. I mean, I'll, I'll just tell it to you. The truth is you're, con you're not controlling your content. You don't own your content. Facebook owns your content. Instagram owns your content. YouTube does. And I know you have just recently seen this with Facebook. They changed up um, how they're distributing posts to your friends and to your customers. And now everybody's seen a drop lately. And if that's your primary source, that's going to be tough. But let me tell you how an app can totally help you. Okay. 
if you have the other, the, well, let me back up. The other thing is you don't really have a community. Like you have a lot of people that see your videos and they like your videos and they buy your products, but you don't have a community. And so the number one way you can build a community and get more people to see your stuff is through an app. So you build an app and on your app, you would have everything that you just mentioned. You'd have the video course. Um, any post you make on social media, you could show in the app, like new videos. If you have, let's say you have a YouTube channel and you post new videos, they would automatically be in the app. And then the best part about that is if I have the app and you post a video, I get a push notification that says Sabine just posted a video or posted a new blog or whatever you posted, right? And I see it on my phone and I get a push notification that it's there because what's happening, particularly with email, with a lot of my clients is they're, they're saying they get fewer and fewer open rates on their emails because people aren't paying attention to email. Not as pe many people are going onto their email on their phone anymore. They're on social sites and they're getting push notifications. So one of the best things you can do is create an app, put all your content in one area. You still put it on Facebook. You still put it on Instagram. You still put it on YouTube, but you have an app with all your content in one area. You could sell, sell, create and sell multiple programs. Um, and again, everybody, you have a higher likelihood of people seeing your post. Because when I'm on my phone, if I get an instant notification from you that says, hey, Sabine just posted a video, there's a much higher likelihood of me just clicking once and going to that video than there is when I'm going through my email and I go, oh, another new video. She posted another new video. Next day, she posted another new video. You know what I mean? It's like people don't, people are actually, um, statistics show that, um, people responding to texts and in-app notifications or push notifications is like double what it is for email. So if, um, if you're like Sabine, you know, or you're like FlexCare and you have, you know, Sabine has a problem where her content's being controlled by someone else. FlexCare, their technical debt is huge. Universal Orlando, um, Safeway, they're, they're disrupting, right? They're becoming the disruptor. There's all these companies that are out there doing these things. And this is the reason you need to create a five-year mobile plan. Where are you going to be in five years? How are you going to be doing it? So here's the call to action, right? I'll give it to you right now. Um, I want you to create a high-level five-year technical plan. Figure it out. Do it. I've given you some tips on how to do that. Create a mastermind group. Um, once a month, put some time on a calendar, do a retreat. Number two is I want you to identify all of your current technical debt. How bad is it? You know, put it all on paper and let's put it in front of us. Let's not hide from it anymore. Um, I, and then number three, identify all the disruptive companies in your industry. So you know who they are and you're tracking them and you're paying attention to them, paying attention to their growth. Can you mimic them? Can you acquire them? whatever. And then the final and most important one, decide right now today that you're going to be the leader in mobile in your industry. So that's it for the show today. Um, the importance of having a mobile strategy for the next five years. I enjoyed giving this information to you. I hope you found value in it. Again, my name is Jeremy Callahan, the app man, jeremycallahan.com. I have a podcast every Wednesday night, a Facebook live every Tuesday and a ton of free content on my YouTube channel, on social media. Give me a follow. Give me a share. I'd appreciate it. And thank you for joining the podcast.